but we're seeing, and I don't really think we're seeing a lot of interest. I mean, polls are showing that there's a great deal of interest, even among non-believers, non-church going people. They really believe we're living in a prophetic time or an end of age time. I mean, they, even secular polls are showing that. Uh, as a pastor, when I hear that, my antenna goes up and I go, man, we, this is, this is a right time to be speaking truth because they're asking questions. Uh, but so many pastors are a little hesitant about that, or either they're hung up on this pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, I was even listening last week uh, to a pastor that was saying, you know, we're we're not in that phase. You know, we're, you know, there's not going to be this. There's going to be a rapture, but it's going to happen this way or that way. In other words, what you and I would probably consider a more amillennial viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And the ones, the one straw man that I call straw man that gets thrown out there, you know, the rapture didn't even get to start talking about until John Darby talked about it. And uh, I said, well, actually, that's not true. Paul talked about it. <laughs> so that was first century. So when you hear these things, Jeff, how do you respond to that? Why is the pre-tribulation, why do we see it as biblical truth and not some myth out there? Yeah, I mean, some people look at the pre-trib rapture, meaning that Christ will come and rescue his church before or pre-tribulation, or that time of, of seven years when God's going to pour out his wrath on planet Earth. They look at that as sort of a, a passing fad or a trendy kind of thing. Uh, and I always like to point out that the, the most dominant view of the end times uh, is more of an amillennial view or maybe a symbolic approach uh, to the rapture. In fact, I heard a, a pastor yesterday on a television program say, look, I, I just believe Jesus is going to come back and second coming in the rapture, all the same event. So I think the dominant view is not the preacher of rapture, but, but because we're talking about it more, it's gotten a lot more press. So the criticism of the preacher of rapture, one of the criticisms is that it's a recent doctrine. And anytime you hear someone say something like that, you have to look at church history because <clears throat> the, the past 2,000 years, uh, if you want to determine what you should believe by looking at church history, you're going to be all over the map. Uh, in fact, you get up to about 1,500 and the doctrine of, of salvation by grace through faith, which is a core belief in Christianity, was not popular for a 1,000 years. Uh, mm -hmm. When the Catholic Church was in charge and and instigating indulgences and works based salvation, long comes this guy named Martin Luther, and he protests, which is why we're Protestants against these uh, these uh, these half truths, these lies, and that they're propagating. And now we believe in grace through faith. Well, if you'd have been you know 1492 and you'd have said, uh, "What's the most popular Bible doctrine?" Uh, you'd say, what's well, work salvation? And then along comes Martin Luther. You say, no, that's a new doctrine. We don't want that. So, so we can't look at church history and say, well, all of a sudden, here comes a pre-trib rapture belief. That's something new. Uh, right. What we really have to ask ourselves is not what does church history say, but most importantly, what does the Bible say? So we can really cut through. That's the great thing, Bucky, about being a believer is you can cut through all of the fog of history and go right back to God's word and say, what does the Bible say? So I would say this about the preacher of rapture. Number one is that you look at the pattern of God's deliverance in scripture. Uh, you look at Noah and the ark, uh, that before the judgment came, God rescued Noah, uh, made them safe. Uh, you look at Enoch, who was also raptured uh, and, uh, prior to the flood. And then, of course, you have Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Lot didn't live through uh, Sodom's judgment. He was delivered out of uh, Sodom, uh, Solomon, uh, excuse me, Sodom's judgment. And so God's pattern of scripture is that when he delivers his wrath, he takes his people out. Now, people will quickly say, well, we're never promised we're not going to go through hard times. That's true. In fact, we're actually promised we're going to be persecuted. Uh, but that's man's judgment. That's man's wrath, not God's wrath. And, and Bucky, we believe, of course, you believe this too, Romans 8, 1, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because God's wrath fell on Jesus at the cross so that we don't have to experience his wrath in eternity or in the tribulation. So you got the pattern of scripture, just theologically, that God has covered us in Christ. Uh, you've got the, the the promise of Jesus in John 14, that he's going to come back and, and take his bride home. You've got the prophecy of Paul in 1 Thess, and you've got the portrayal of the church in Revelation, uh, where we're portrayed in Revelation as not being here during that seven-year period. So 
Preacher of Rapture, recent doctrine. Well, if you think 2,000 years ago is recent, maybe, uh, but uh, they say it's an escape clause, you know, I, and I just go, well, sure it was. It was an escape clause for Noah, escape clause for uh, for for a lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. So yeah, it takes a lot of heat, but uh, then again, I, I encourage all the listeners and, and uh, hearers just to say, what does my Bible tell me? Go back to the scripture, you'll find the answer. You know, and uh, for those of you who are in, we're talking to Jeff Kenley, author, podcaster, speaker and so you can certainly find out a lot about him on jeffkinley.com 